Tonight I'm here in Brussels, and Brussels and the Commission has sued all these companies in some shape or form, many times themselves. But they've also had a different strategy in Europe. They used to change the law, and once the law's changed, everybody has to fall in line. For instance, the new Digital Services Act, the DSA, it took full effect last month. It gives a new framework for tech, for social media, and for the way things run. You can see the way they changed the rules, for instance, on iPhone chargers and how everybody now has to have USB-C. Thierry Breton is the EU Commissioner for the Internal Market. He's a former media exec, former finance minister. He says that, yes, litigation is all fair and good, but if you change the law, then everybody has to follow on, and the Digital Services Act is already working. In the past two weeks, Richard, we have seen Apple moving much faster in the interest of others than in the past 10 years. That's a fact. We are just here again to give rules, to explain, and yes, we have also, like when you have any rules, we have also fines. If you don't fulfill your obligations now to, uh, to have the benefit to uh, enjoy the biggest digital market of the free world, 450 million times two ice ball here in Europe. We are very happy that everyone could benefit from it, but we have rules, and if you don't fulfill these rules, yes, you will pay fine, or if you don't comply, yes, we could propose a breakup. But I hope we will not go here because we want everyone, on one hand, right. to benefit from our market and to fulfill our obligations. There is a view that Europe is anti-digital or anti-tech. The GDPR, first of all, then the Digital Services Act, now the AI Act. Admittedly, the, you know, uh, the, 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 the Commission uh, on Antitrust has gone very firmly against many of the major tech players and many of them say this environment in Europe is not tech friendly. It is not true at all. I am a former CEO. I don't know exactly. That's that when I needed. I operated in many tech companies in, a, in, in more than 100 countries and I always say to my team we are here to respect of course the laws when we operate but we need to have rules. If you don't have rules uh, it's the far west. You have class actions at least here, come in Europe. That's light regulation, light rules, but we need so to have some rules in the digital space. The Artificial Intelligence Act, which has now passed Parliament and is coming into force, yes. how will it change the way we do business with AI? It took us five years. We worked since five years on this AI Act. It is a risk-based approach. In other words, we don't regulate technology. We just regulate the, the services and the services that we believe are at risk. In other words, we want to give visibility and security for our fellow citizens when using AI. Who's stronger in terms of holding feet to the fire, the US or the EU? I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think like this. Uh, I really think that today uh, we work extremely well and closely uh, with uh, many uh, allies in what we call digital partnerships. We have, we have in the UK, we have in the US, we have in, in Canada, we have with Korea, we have with many, many partners. Uh, and, and of course... But the two biggest are now the EU and the US, the two largest players that have the most power to regulate, disrupt or change. Personally, I really think that we should be closer and closer and closer with our, with our US friends and allies.